doctorate program in particular physics and astrophysics and cosmology. His main research are related to high energy physics and astroparticle physics, in particular, cosmic rays of extremely high energy. In the late 80s, he was working at CERN. He was formerly a member of the WA72, WA74, and A38, and finally the Delphi uh, collaboration at CERN, where also some members of our institute were working these days. His original contributions have been mostly related to the search for new particles, uh, also hadronic interactions for extremely high energies, and some more recently to uh, some the design of some innovative uh, detector for particles and astroparticle physics. From the teaching point of view, he has uh, he has a large experience of more than twenty years teaching at Portugal not only uh, general physics, but also particle and astroparticle physics, and not only in Portugal, also at the University of Udine and Trieste. Recently, he's uh, deeply involved uh, in a project, the Southern White Field Observatory in South America. This is a ground white field gamma ray detector, similar in a certain way to Hawk in, in Mexico and Lasso, in China, but to be built, to be constructed in the South Hemisphere. Uh, this is going to be the topic of his talk. Uh, again, it is a pleasure to invite, or to have invited Mario Pimenta to give us a talk in a topic which is quite directly related with the objectives of our Institute in Parcos. So please, Mario, you can start where you like. Okay, so, boas tardes a todos. Good afternoon to everybody. I thank you the invitation. So it's a pleasure to give a lecture in, in Madrid, in Spain. Uh, the only regret that I have is to be remote. So I miss the dinner and I miss the persons and I miss uh, all the good friends that I have in Spain and in Madrid. But that's life. I hope that in a few months we can go back to a normal uh, social life and uh, the, in discussion in corridors because giving lectures without seeing people eyes on the eyes is very difficult and uh, not so rewarding. But anyhow, that's like we have, so better to go to do it. So uh, my, my talk, as uh, Fernando was saying, is about a new project, perhaps a new dream or a new challenge, whatever you call, is to build a large observatory for gamma rays at high altitude in South America. So I try to, to explain the motivation and the status where we are. So, but first of all, I, I have to do a, a disclaimer. We are in a R&D phase, and we have already a big conversion, as you'll see later on, and we have not yet an official design. We, are, we should have an official design in two years. So whatever I say is just engage me. So nothing that I will say uh, is any official statement of the of the collaboration where we are doing the R&D phase. So I have the freedom to do my own thinking, and of course that's what I'm proposing inside collaboration, but we, we'll see uh, what, what will happen in the next one, two years. So let's start with the uh, charged cosmic rays by historical reasons, because I know this since two. 2005, and they are the origin of, uh, of or, or any of the gamma rays. And uh, I like always this, this, this plot because it gives you the feeling where we are talking about. We are talking about of phenomena that spans over many, many orders of magnitude. So uh, for sure you know everything uh, about this plot, but uh, it's always amazing that um, our the energy of our beams, the LHC, is many orders of magnitude below of the energies that we collect at, at uh, OG. And I start, uh, and uh, always the question that we have been since the discovery of cosmic rays is where they are coming from. So we know that uh, at uh, about below the GV or, or, or in GV region, it's more so, uh, from the sun. Then we have the galaxy. In galaxy, we have supernova that, uh, that are one of possible sources of that we know that of cosmic rays, that at the highest energy, 
you know already that they are not from our galaxy, thanks to Roger, but we have candidates, uh, several candidates, but we have not uh, sure about what are the sources. But anyhow, there are the extreme environments that we have uh, in the universe that are for sure the sources of, of this very, very high energetic gamma rays. I want to start, uh, okay, I think I can go on this. We should know the spectrum, and uh, that's the the, the spectrum that uh, the, one of the most recent spectra that we have collecting all this year. And uh, when you see this, uh, I put here because you, you should pay attention that we have this trick to multiply the, uh, the, uh, the, the flux by some e to the power something to be, to be flat in the region and to stress the regions where, uh, where there are breaks. So there are these regions that historically they are called knee, ankle, and, and things like that. OG is, is, is here in very high energy with the observatory in part of the charge cosmic rays. I think we can go here in the region of the knee. So one of the reasons that I want also to talk about OG is because OG is in South America, uh, is in Argentina in the pump of Argentina, you see the location, and it's very near from possible locations of our observatory. Of course, OG is at 1,400 or something meters of altitude. Our observatory that we intend to build will be much higher, it will be above 4,000 meters, but not very far away. They are, they are a little on the north, there are several regions in Chile and, um, and in Argentina, and also there are other candidates. But I also also to show, because people that don't know OG, Fernando is a member for OG for many years, is that is a, a very nice environment to do physics and to do very good physics, but also for social life and uh, in very rewarding, because it's, uh, if you compare with Europe, it's uh, one of the places where people the population is very, very young. It's not like Europe, it's old, old continent. It's very, very young. And OG make, make enormous thanks to many people, but in particular to Jim Cronin, that was one of the formats of OG that's here, that make life different for these people. So science in this region is also really a source of progress. And uh, it's very rewarding that we work with this feeling inside the population like that. And you, you, and you need to have the support of population because it's in the middle of nowhere. And uh, if, uh, if, if population do, does not support, then everything will disappear during the night. That was one of the problems in the United States when they wanted to do something like that because people uh, just... Uh, uh, till all just, just, just uh, with the, to, uh, like to, to to target the things like that. So, and of course, it's very rewarding because uh, we have social life and good food. So, somehow we want to 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 do an, another kind of observatory, uh, but uh, but uh, at high altitude, but uh, looking also that this environment we should something for 20 years or 30 years like OG is, is running. So that's the results of OG. I, uh, I, I just the, does not resist to, to show the spectrum. And this result of, of OG, it's, uh, it's very, very important. It took us uh, many years to arrive there. So you see multiplied by two e to the power spectrum at the highest energy. And you see that we have already a very nice statistics, so nice that you see that there is a structure that was nobody was uh, thinking about. So we have this uh, increasing that people was expecting, but there, there is a plateau, and then you have this break uh, that uh, nowadays is interpreted by the combination, by the convolution of some propagation effect, uh, like GZK and so on, but also for the isolation of sources. 
And now people, uh, and that makes a lot of astrophysics problems because nobody was thinking how to, to, to have sources that could uh, do this kind of spectrum. And the present interpretation is that we have a mixed composition and things like that, but I'm, it's one of my favorite subjects, but not of this today talk. And also we have very nice results in, in muons, and that was also one of my favorite subjects for many years. And uh, what is nice is data is, uh, uh, shows that simulations uh, are not good. So the prediction, present prediction after all these years from hedonic models do not reproduce our data. And that is very nice whenever it appears and it's very interesting for the theoreticians, for the students, for everybody, because it's always better when you discover something that uh, is not expected. But okay, let's go to, to, to the photons. So now I go to neutrals. So here we show what is called the Granuli 5 photon spectrum. So with many, many experiments, many detectors, whatever. So we have here the scale of energies uh, in EV, EV. So here you have in wavelengths. Okay, here you see this peak is our famous cosmic microwave background. The region that we are going to talk about is basically what we are talking about gamma rays. So definitions are always borders of definition are not very fixed, but okay. Uh, but basically we are going to talk to something above the GV. So 10 GV, 20 GV, 100 GV, probably more on 100 GV. So more on, on this, but on GV region until the PV or tens of PV. So that's the region, the window where, um, where you want to explore. And in this window, if you see in this plot that is an old one, I was not able to, to get uh, an update of it. You see that most of these are not really point, uh, the experimental point are just limits. So that means that you don't, uh, at that point, we didn't know very well what are the flux, uh, the real flux? Uh, okay, of course, integrate for everything. In these open points is the charged cosmic ray that was measured by uh, by Roger. And you see that, okay, somehow you, they are parallel because uh, uh, at these energies, they are ob obviously connected because you accelerate charged particles and then the such particle either uh, given by inverse Compton or whatever, or by decay of hadronic particles, by P zeros, for instance, then you give the spectrum of the gamma ray. So both spectra are deeply connected. So they are face, the two, the two faces of the same coin. And that's why that is so important to observe both at the same time or never, or, or to understand the feature of possible sources. So we have the gamma rays. The gamma rays arrive to us. Hopefully, if we have satellites, you can catch them above, uh, above the atmosphere. And then you have what you call the primary uh, gamma rays. So you measure the, your, your favorite particles, in this case, the, the, the photon. If you are not able to catch them above the atmosphere, then they interact in the atmosphere. And then you have Einstein working so energy goes uh, goes to mass, and one particle of these energies of uh, several GV uh, can give thousands, uh, many many thousands of of uh, of, of particles, uh, uh, and we have what we call usually a shower. So a shower is just multiplication uh, of 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 uh, of. Okay, I go back to, to it uh, showing. So in space, in space, you need a satellite. So the, in the last year, all the data was the, is dominated by data from Fermi satellite. We have here the scale of Fermi satellite. Uh, it was a huge and very successful adventure. It's covering regions uh, up to some 10, 20 GV and going much less. The GV, so, but uh, so it's basically you have a silicon tracker 
uh, to, to get charge, the direction of the charged particles, so the photon converts, and then you have a pair, and you try to measure the pair, and then you have a crude emitter uh, just to measure the energy of the electromagnetic particles. Everything uh, is contained, uh, it's very nice, but very small, 1.6 by 1.6 meters, so we have really a two, three square meters surface in space. So it's very good whenever the flux, the expected flux is, uh, is high, but whenever you increase the energy, you don't catch anything with this kind of surface. So we have to go to ground. And when you go to ground, you get showers. That is a major, okay, I picked that from, from our, my talk in OG. That's uh, one proton at 10 to 19 electron volts hitting the atmosphere and you see all the mass of the particles that goes uh, the green are muons the blue are uh, electrons uh, the, the red i don't know are pions or, or some single crayons or whatever and uh, you see that uh, okay the challenge is always to convert the things that uh, that are produced in the atmosphere and arrive at the surface to get the direction and the energy and uh, of the incoming particle and also to know which kind of incoming particle it is what you call i don't know why it's called composition so we have showers so basically you can have showers initiated, initiated by photons and then we have electromagnetic shower one fault of uh, uh, photon at this energy basically can go to a, a pair okay of course they, they need a uh, a pair of particles, uh, electron positron, then you can have Bramstrong, then the, and so on, and then you multiply and you have a shower of uh, basically photons of electrons. There is a small probability to have an hard photon that converts in a pair of muons, uh, a pair of muons that exist, but uh, the probability to have it is small, and but it's a source of background, of course. And then you have the cosmic rays. The show of the cosmic rays is completely different. Why? Because we have a, an hadronic core, so we have an hadronic interaction. We have a high multiplicity. These uh, energies, uh, you can we have can have many tens, hundreds of particles produced already in the first uh, interaction, and then we have all the shower and cascade of particles. And of course, you are producing one third that are basically pi zeros. Pi zeros go to photons, and then you have your electromagnetic showers again uh, as a subproduct of the hadronic shower, but you have the hadronic core that, that's, that's real like that. Uh, to give an idea, when you are trying to tag photons, these guys, the shadows one, are a huge background. Why? Because you have 10. Uh, uh, 10,000 10, more at more or less equivalent energies, more charged cosmic rays than photons. So we have to disentangle one, uh, one photon in, okay, uh, in, a, in a mass of 10,000 10, um, uh, protons, whatever, or, or nuclear, whatever, showers, hadronic uh, showers. And, uh, and if it is easy, to disentangle uh, at a level of, of a few percent. Whenever you want to find one to ten, ten to nine four, life is more difficult. By high, it's it's uh, it's easy to understand what I'm talking about. Here is a shower of uh, of fifty GV in the atmosphere. That's the longitudinal profile, and that is the transverse profile at some uh, middle point of the longitudinal profile. So you see that you have a. Uh, a uh, compact core, so we are seeing the, the electrons. Uh, we have a compact core, uh, basically a straight line, and we have uh, then uh, low energy particles going around. That's 50 GV. If you go to 1 TV, basically the, the, the image is similar. Of course, you have much more uh, uh, energy so the, the longitudinal profile is fatter so you have an image that is larger but basically the feature is like that if you go to a to a proton for instance one on a gv life is completely different and in this event you say okay no problem to to distinguish by high 
this from this. So, in principle, they are quite different. You have second um, subclusters because we have these atomic particles that have some transverse momentum and then develop their own showers. And so, this image is much more dispersed. The problem is the tiles always. And we have, again, we have to disentangle uh, to at least a rejection factor higher than 10 to minus 4. So it's not a trivial thing. So then it arrived to us, and then the question is how you detect them. So you detect basically, you are talking about this energy range. So I'm not talking about uh, lower energy range, but in this GV region, above GV region, basically we have two ways. One is one that you know very well in your institute, because if I understand well, you are members of some groups of your institute are members of CTA. So is this technique of imaging atmospheric Cherenkov telescope, where basically you are catching the Cherenkov light produced by the shower the, um, in, in its development. That's very interesting because then we are at some level, uh, usually at one, one, one kilometer or one kilometer and a half altitude to be somehow higher than the, with a, a better atmosphere, but you are collecting light that are produced at very high energy. Or you want to, to do a thing similar to, to what is done in, in, in OG, you want to catch directly the particles of showers. But to catch the particles of showers, we have to go at high altitude because here you have no more particles in showers because the shower has, uh, has, has gone away. So we have to go at high altitude. And basically, like Roger, you have to put some detectors that are sensitive to particles, basically to charge particles, but to, okay, the photons convert inside your detector, either you put some thin part of lead or water, whatever, so they convert and what you are co uh, connecting are charged particle. And then we have several techniques. One is scintillation, of course. The other, that is uh, the one that OG is also using, is to have uh, what is called water sharing of tanks. So it's basic tanks of uh, full of water and the charged particle cross and produce sharing of light and then somehow you collect this uh, sharing of light in some whatever so PMTs uh, that is more, more usual um, and then you, you get a signal that's the usual thing. So you have ground arrays and you have ACTs. An example of a uh, very successful example, you know that much better than me. I was there already three times, so it was very interesting to go there three times to beginning for the inauguration of the second telescope and also for the launching of the first telescope of CTA NOS. It was perhaps some of you have been there. It's very nice, uh, magic in, the, in La Palma Island. Or you go to very high altitude to uh, uh, magic, I think it's about 2,000 meters or something like that, uh, a little above 2,000 meters, if I, I remember well. Um, uh, or you go at high altitude, and uh, the best uh, uh, example nowadays is last in Tibet, but I go back to it uh, later on. Okay, so why you have these two techniques and there are people trying to build observatories based in these two techniques? Because they are complementary. So, uh, yes, it is very good. Uh, nobody can beat them in, uh, in uh, energy and angular resolution. So it's very good, but they have a problem. So they are telescope. They have to point to something. So we have an error field of view of a few degrees, whatever. But so you, you, you must point your telescope, and uh, then you observe very well whatever you point. But you have to point. So you, lo you, lose, in, in, you lose basically two things. One is transients, things that go very fast, for instance, a gamma ray burst or whatever. So you can have an alert and then you point to, to where it happens, but you lose at least 
some tens of seconds for magic uh, you know that uh, you can you, you can react very fast but even very fast i don't know is about 30 seconds 40 seconds or something like that so and we have to move and things like that and we, and all the network of communications and the alert has to be all working but more or less that is putting but you and and how you, you you lose this and you have to be available to look it but also you you lose the phenomena uh, that where you have to integrate over many uh, time and large uh, angular regions for instance we have a, a nice example uh, nowadays with Fermi bubbles that nobody was expecting and um, okay I'll show an image later on so that's the problem of the ICTs the problem or the advantage okay it's always things you have always advantage and you have some always limitations here clearly in ground race you have clearly a poor energy that is poor uh, and then solution that is poor but uh, is improving and the new observatories are improving but and now you cannot compare the two things on the on the energy resolution and angular resolution but you have a wide field of view so basically you are looking always for the old sky above your 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 detector okay if you want more or less 60 degrees something like that uh, because then the sea is more opaque but but you have to cross too much atmosphere but it's good for nothing so anyhow but okay that's another story uh, and they are always working so OG as 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 a time uh, is on about uh, above 95 percent 97 98 that is a very interesting feature that OG is uh, getting over the years uh, so basically you can have one single detector that is not uh, working but you have a, a larger array, and so basically you are always uh, working during the day the night uh, with cloud without cloud uh, with a good atmosphere of course here in our cities you, you need to have a, a good uh, a good sky so basically here you are working about 15 percent of the time and here you are always dead so that's a good advantage so the two things are complementary because they can uh, they, they can explore different regions uh, very fast phenomena and very uh, large uh, regions of space for instance for the dark matter that will be also very useful if you don't have a, a point wall sources and you can give alerts so it's very nice to have both of them and uh, and you are, we are nowadays in that we have been lucky lucky i've been lucky in my life and one of the things that i have been lucky in the past years that when i started this business of thinking about this new observatory it i have already two momentum that put a lot of interest in scientific community on this kind of adventure one it happens uh, a few years ago uh, you, you can you can see 2017 uh, we, we have the two first events where you have a, a, a simultaneous observation of in one one gravity cell waves and one electromagnetic waves and in the other the observation observation of a very high energy neutrino and the electromagnetic wave photons and this one was by magic so we have the same source producing two messages that arrive and then you can constrain a lot so it's you are observing the same phenomena by different channels and the, the future will be that so we have to have all the possible channels in, in connection and build a, a network and that I was very lucky because that put the pressure to have everything um, to, all, to, to cover all the sky and also uh, something that uh, a few years ago I was very and, and, and still I'm, I'm very very interested is also the low energies this GV range is to 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 make transition between the firm and satellite and the high energy data and so here we are talking about things that happens uh, at most at um, 
a few tens of GV, until 100 GV, something like that. We are not talking about uh, the very, uh, the very, very, very high energy photons. So I was lucky in 2017 when this appeared. Um, of course, I have no, no contribution on that. <laughs> so I benefit from the work of the others. And I was very lucky this year, already uh, last month, when, uh, okay, you know that we have, they had the data, but the data was published in May this year, where uh, uh, LASU has first, first time discovered sources that are emitting on photons on between a, a few hundreds of TV and PV region. And nobody a few years ago was thinking that uh, that, that was possible to have sources at, with this extreme energy. And uh, so all the adventure of, of uh, gamma rays that most of you know better than me, start with uh, GV, then TV, the first TV photon was an happening, then 10 TV, uh, a few years ago, uh, the, the highest energy was about of a few tens of GV, and now we are ready, uh, uh, basically, uh, two orders of magnitude above, so you are already reaching the PV. And that's very impressing, and that uh, makes the dream of many theoreticians on astrophysics. I'm not an uh, astrophysics, so I'm particle physics and astroparticle, not astrophysics, because I don't know enough for that. But okay, so I was lucky again. So, what is the present situation of uh, gamma ray observatory for high energy? So, in red, we have the, the ones that are working nowadays um, for RCT. So, we have Veritas, Magic, S, basically. And the, for ground arrays, what are working nowadays is basically, the, or at least the, the biggest one, are OK in Mexico, as Fernando was saying, and Lasso in, um, in, uh, in China, in Malayas. Uh, not at Tibet, in Tibet they had a previous experiment uh, that was Argo, but was smaller, much smaller. So they have this one. So you see, if I just go to ground the race, you see that all the entire south sky has no observatory there. And the south sky, of course, is interesting because it's half of the sky, and half of the sky is considerable, but also because in south we have the center of our, ga our galaxy. And our galaxy, the center of our galaxy, we know that we have all this black, uh, uh, they have this black hole, uh, big black hole in the center of our galaxy is a source of many newborn stars, many happenings are there, they have a lot of concentration, they have a lot of source of photons. So we are missing, at the ground arrays, the center of our galaxy. So, of course, as someone was saying, one day or another, this has to be solved. And what we are start thinking, basically was an adventure between um, Portugal, okay, our group that was in OG, Brazil, CBPF, uh, our friends in Rio de Janeiro, everything is start with, with friends, that's the good thing in collaborations. And our Italian friends, from Padua, Udin, and things like that, we said, okay, why not uh, uh, there to, to go to, to South America? We are already in OG, why we know the environment, we like the environment, we, not, we like the the food, we like the people, we like the physics, it's nice physics, so let's go. So that's uh, we, where we uh, started this kind of adventure. Personally, we start with uh, a small collaboration that was um, called Lattes at this time. So it was basically um, Portugal, Brazil, Italy, and Czech Republic. I was always trying to convince um, our my f Spanish friends, but somehow in Spain is difficult because uh, all the money for this kind of activities goes to CTA. And also, I can understand because it's in Canarias. And they are always saying, before you have built uh, the thing, we cannot, uh, we are not allowed because politicians will kill us if you ask money. But we, don't, we are not in a time of money, we are a time of thinking. 
but uh, I have already uh, we'll talk about some collaboration with my Spanish friends and I hope that some of you in Madrid will also be interested and somehow put questions to me to Fernando whatever Fernando was even in some of the talk of, of our meetings in beginning or in time of life. So the idea is to do it in Danish. And we have formed this collaboration. This collaboration was formed after the meeting in Lisbon in May 2019. Uh, and it grew very fast, faster than I thought, because we started with this cruise and putting together with people from OC that and also the plan to also to do in that time what they call a rock sauce. So we have lattice and rock sauce. And at, at the end, the most difficult thing was to choose a name. And the name was not very easy and not is not brilliant. And for the moment, perhaps then we make a, um, uh, a call for, for ideas for name. But for the moment, it's called the Southern, uh, Southern Wide Field Gamma Ray Observatory. It's an RED, it's in a design phase. In, uh, I, I prefer to call it design that RED because it's not, okay, you have some RED activities, but basically we have a design activity. And now we have already 13 countries there, 50 institutes. Of course, uh, some institutes have uh, just a few people. 100 people in these institutes that are members of the collaboration, they have signed a MOU. And we have 32 researchers that are listed di different because what we call supporting institutes or supporting scientists that from many countries, but uh, that are uh, for some reasons, and basically sometimes political funding and things like that, or, or critical mass, uh, they, they have not, uh, their, in, uh, their, um, their institute is not an official member of the collaboration. And that's the case for Spain, where you have been working with um, uh, a group of uh, Granada. Uh, and uh, they are uh, very useful and they are producing very nice articles. And also we are making some collaboration with uh, our friends of Santiago Compostela for the moment. And that's participation of uh, Spanish scientists in the project for, so far. So, for the moment, there are four or five Spanish involved in the project. It's not too much, but okay. I hope that at some point Spain will enter and become green. Same problem is with France. France uh, does not uh, allow to, uh, because they have to pay CTA, uh, CTA and uh, so they don't want to disperse. Italy is completely different and Germany also. They, are, they have not the same attitude. Okay, so we want to, to build an observatory in South and that gives you the, the idea of complementarity of the South. We have the, the, uh, in the galactic co uh, coordinates. So here you have the center of the galaxy. So the region of SWO is this one, uh, more or less pink. The blue is the region of Oc, and uh, this dark pink is the region that we can uh, we observe in SWGO, we observe in SWGO, and it's not accessible to Oc. So, of course, that depends, uh, the time will depend the, the exact location of the site, but we know more or less uh, the, the position. So we don't know if we'll be at the end in Peru, Bolivia, Argentina, or Chile, but you don't, of course, for, uh, in terms of science, most, uh, most south will be better. But okay, you see. And you have this galactic center, and you have the Fermi bubbles that I was referring, this large structure that was a very important and surprising result from, from Fermi, and you know, for, for sure, the story of uh, discovery of the Fermi bubbles. That is very interesting. So, what is the science that we want to do? Science, okay, in this graphic, uh, we, okay, I have here the time scale and the, the, the distance of the south, and you see that we have a lot of, of, uh, of physics to do. So, things very far away, but, uh, but where you have to observe uh, very fast, for instance, a good example are gamma ray bursts here, 
of course, if you want to, to observe things uh, nearby, so galactic things, um, then you can uh, you have to to observe somehow this um, uh, this uh, during uh, a large period of time, even more than than one year. So you follow the evolution along along the time. If you follow, if there are flares, there are not flares. If whatever, what is the the state the state the state um, and so on. So that gives you the dimension and time and distance. Uh, and then you have on energy. So in on energy, I was talking that satellites go to the tens of GV. And I was talking that Perugia is at highest energy. Uh, it was designed basically to go as above, uh, OK, near 10 to 19, above 10 to 19 until uh, few 10 to 18, but now we have low energy extension in UG, and then you go already to 10 to 17, even below 10 to 17. So 10 to 17 is 10, 10 PV. So clearly, my ambition, our ambition of our group is to somehow to fill this gap between present satellites and Pierre Roger in South. The present uh, uh, observatories, uh, like uh, LASSO and, um, and OCK, basically they start, uh, the window starts about a few hundreds of GV. So clearly we would like to go below and it's possible to go to high energy. And I will try to convince that is a dream, but is not, I hope, a completely unrealistic uh, uh, dream. So I don't, I don't go to in detail with science law that I pick from the official documents of SWGO, but you see that you have many, many uh, 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 core science goals, and you have defined, you are in a design phase, requirements to, to say, OK, you have to build a detector that you need to do something uh, that is useful and the people want. So for each. Uh, for, for, for each uh, goal, scientific goal, we have uh, defined a requirement and uh, up to us to prove that we are building a detector that uh, complies with these, um, with these requirements. So this is an exercise that uh, we were doing in Lisbon is to get an, uh, an order of magnitude of the size that we need. Of course, the size, when we are talking about size, basically we are talking about the highest energy is possible because as we see when you increase the energy the flux decreases very fast we tend to to eat to tend to 2.7 to 2.5 to whatever to something a little less than three and so we have this decrease on flux very very energetic and to compensate this decrease we have to increase the the, the area that's the only game here, in this square, is the present, this result of made of this year of LASSO. So this between uh, a few, uh, okay, a few hundreds of, of, of TV or above 100 TV and PV, the highest uh, event they have, it's almost one TV, so nine, 900 or something TV. So, the flux will be something like that, but okay, I have somehow, we have to, somehow to invent because it's not completely clear what they are in a constructing phase, what was the, the area that uh, they were uh, using to get this result. I think they were using just one third of the area and the period, I think it was uh, almost one year, but some kind of, so take this with uh, uh, error bars, with uh, perhaps I'm, I'm, uh, I'm wrong by a factor of two, but anyhow, this is a logarithm scale, so it does not change too much. And here, it's the, the line that you get from the extrapolation of this line that I have shown in the beginning on this region, what more or less people think are the flux on this region. So we, we, we get more or less that, this thing, and I was, uh, I was happy because uh, this is not too far, so uh, in, within the efforts that 
quite compatible, and also this is some kind of guess. So, but the orders of magnitude are correct, and that means the the the, the, the conclusion is uh, is simple: is to observe the PV region, you need at least one kilometer square to have something about 10 to 100 events per year, and here we are observing, uh, let's call two square radians, so more or less 60 degrees, and we are not taking deficiency. Of course, if you multiply it by 0.5, then you have uh, a few tenths uh, of events. And uh, the number of events of LASSO, I think, is 23, so is in this order of magnitude. If you go to 10 TV, then, of course, the flux is much higher, so you, can, you are allowed to, to do something smaller. Uh, for instance, if you go uh, to 100,000 square meters, then you are clearly above 1 million events per year, and, um, and uh, there uh, you are talking about 1 million or 10 million something events per year. So the statistics loss of mod is not a problem, but if you want to see faint sources, then it will be a problem because it, that is integrated for all sources in, in sky. But if you want to, to study a particular source, then uh, it's flux of this source. So it's very important to have statistics for that. But also uh, one of the big challenges is, as I talked before, um, about the, uh, the uh, to be to be able to discriminate photons from protons, and you can go with this exercise and clear. You see that the one uh, one hundred GV there is no problem with the total number of events. You have even more events that you can collect. So you have a problem of trigger. And that is very challenging, and we have been working also on that, but that's uh, not subject of this talk. And uh, so I more or less cover this. So that's the first uh, first idea. What is the size of things that you want to build? To compare, Orc is uh, eighty thousand uh, square, uh, square meters. Basically, is a radius of one hundred sixty meters, and the last has this magic one square kilometers. Uh, that means a radius about 560 meters. So that's the sky. Then the question is which fuel factor you, you need to have. Uh, of course, what is the fuel factor? In the ground array, you have stations. So in, in OG, we are putting one station every 1.5 kilometers. So they are far apart, but that's not a problem because you are talking about Shows very, very energetic. So shows have a footprint in the ground of several kilometers. So you can uh, catch a shower with even a very low density. And this density is what I call the fuel factor, or what is called the fuel factor. And here for the image, you have uh, uh, what would be the fuel factor, uh, the, the image of a detector. Each point is one station. If you consider a 0.25% uh, fuel factor, then you have your stations about 80 meters apart and to cover an area of five square kilometers, uh, that means five times the area of, of LAS, we will need something about 1,000 stations. So that's the order of magnitude. So you are talking about in the most ambitious thing to, to the highest energy, to cover, we are doing as a few kilometers, so maximum five kilometers. Of course, we have a problem because then you have to find a site where you have a, a surface that you can cover. Because uh, in OG, you have the Pampa. Pampa is more or less um, flat. On top of mountains, it's more difficult to, fi to find a, a region of five square kilometers. One kilometer is not too difficult. We have several sites, five square kilometers, perhaps it's too much, five, two, three, four, okay, whatever, it depends on the site. Uh, and, uh, and here, um, for, uh, here you see uh, the number of stations, okay, uh, saying, okay, I, uh, I consider that station as a signal if uh, you have more than 100 MeV. Uh, of electromagnetic energy there or across by a muon or something like that. And you have the number of, of, of uh, the, the stations uh, the station for some shower energy in case of protons and photons and, in, and also 
in case of, of uh, in case of to have the electromagnetic thing that most of them are electromagnetic, but also the station that on top of the electromagnetic have muons. And so the the numbers to get uh, not of magnitude for uh, uh, to, to for uh, one PV vertical that where I put the core at the center of the ray, I have about 100 stations, even with these small field factors, uh, it, and 30 of these 100 stations will have millions. For the equivalent energy for the photon, uh, it's narrow, so we have 60 stations it, and just two with millions. So that's give you the other of magnitude. So if you want to go to the PV scale, of course, uh, uh, and this is uh, then you you got uh, these uh, th these numbers. So you need really to have this uh, th this surface to 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 go the PV physics and uh, in your time life, of course. And here you see the number devolution as the energy and things like that. And clearly, what you see is if you go from um, uh, if you if you go so the PV is here. If you go well above below the PV, then the, the number of stations is going very uh, very low. So below one, so that's not good. So one with millions, but ten, right? So that's not so good. So if you want to to play physics, you have to increase the field factor at these energies, but in smaller areas. So where, where I have talked already, so we have this, uh, our magic square, uh, where we have people that are proposing sites, and we hope to clarify which site, which best candidate site, and of course that, uh, that depends a lot on the support and of local people there, because we cannot build an observatory against the will, either the country or without the participation, the, the engagement of um, or, or of the scientists of this country. It would be impossible. It's no way to think that OJ could be ever be built in, in, uh, in Malargue without the support of the local authorities, of the country authorities, and of, and of course, most on the top of it, of the Argentinian scientists. So we need to have this, and for me personally, that's one of the, 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 the key factors on choosing a site. You can choose a site by many theoretical uh, uh, parameters. Some of them are more or less equivalent, some are a little li like to bet or not, but there is one key parameter for me is the local support and the interest of the community on, on, on having it. Okay, let's see what happens. It was not easy on south. Then, which detector? So, I are talking about two ground surfaces that are there. So, where is OK? OK is basically water sharing of tanks, but you see they are huge uh, talk, uh, uh, water sharing of tanks. Each tank has about 200 tons of water, so it's huge. And then you have uh, a few hundreds of, of these tanks covering an area of 20,000 square meters. That's more or less rock. And here in Lasso, what we have, we have basically uh, three pools in the center, be, uh, behind uh, these roofs, uh, on the bottom of this roof, we have pools. Pools is always difficult to, to build. Uh, we have, uh, it's very environment demand, demanding, and we have a problem of commissioning and things like that, but uh, Chinese has no, are not afraid of everything. They have built the, the Great Wall, so they can build whatever. So they have these big pools of um, water inside. Uh, why you have to, to have a roof on top? Because what evaporates? If you have a pool without, uh, without you have evaporate, we have still always filling, and the quality of water, of course, water is your detector, so you have to to keep a very good quality of the water, so better to protect it. So we have to build this structure at uh, 5,000 square meters, and then you have these small hills, and these small hills 
are neon detectors. Again, water sharing of tanks, big water sharing of tanks in concrete that are buried about uh, a few meters below the, the ground or something like that, and they are covered by 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 ground. So that's why you see the, this this year. So you see this, and the part of that they have still some scintillators and things like that. So it's a very uh, ambitious detector because it's combining several different technologies and is starting working and giving very interesting results with these uh, high energy photons. So which detector we are considering now? So we are in a R D phase, so are people that um, are proposing uh, different solutions. Of course, uh, it's always uh, inspiring in what have been done in the past. So uh, people that are inspired by the example of Chinese, that's not my favorite option, of course, uh, to build something big on, 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 on center, uh, a, a big swimming pool. And then, uh, then we have detectors uh, buried or not buried uh, around, covering the. This is big, but th this is basically uh, twenty thousand square meters. Uh, so, and uh, the, the rest of it, we have to cover one one thousand kilometers. Then you can say, okay, but if uh, if we need water, why do not go to a lake? And there are people that uh, are exploring the solution of the lake. Of course, solution of lake has a big advantage. We have the water there, but we have still a lot of problems because first, your lake should be uh, high enough and deep enough, and you should be authorized to use the lake to, to put glass, uh, not to bother local fishermen and things like that. There are not so many lakes at high altitude. We are not talking about 4,000 meters in dams, but there are a few, in particular in Peru. But but also the area is limited. So when you are talking about uh, some a few tens of square meters, it's okay. But if you are talking about kilometers square, it's not okay. So you have to put uh, outside the lake. Uh, the, the lake will be some old quad detector like this and put everything on. Or you 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 go to the OG and uh, idea of water sharing of tanks. And nowadays, uh, everyone is allowed to to dream or whatever you, you want, and to have um, to have several designs for these water sharing of tanks with double layer, single layer, different size, etc., and so on. So, and this is the pond, and so on. So, what is our option that we are proposing in Lisbon? Since already one year, and with the help of uh, people from, okay, basically our friends of uh, that were coming from LATS, but with uh, already uh, other newcomers. That means CBPF, uh, people from Padova, people from Re Czech Republic, and things like that. Basically, the core of LATS is smaller tanks, is 1.7 meters tanks, not, not, okay. When I say that, uh, we are designing, so more or less, that's not of magnitude. More or less, four meters, so basically much smaller. It's basically the size of uh, OG tank, a little uh, bigger. Uh, OG tank is 3.6 meters uh, in, and it's 1.2, 1.3 meters. So this is a bit higher than the leader, but basically it's the same thing. Uh, with the same technique of OG, of course, we are coming from OG, but with PMTs not on top as OG, but on the bottom. Why? Because you, uh, uh, you you want to get direct light. So when you have the particles, if you have a, a muon, for uh, for instance, going down, so we have a sharing of to, uh, tank uh, um, cone, and you have the direct light, and that is the sign of a straight particle of a muon somehow, because you have a sharing of a direct light. If uh, you have uh, if you have a diffuse light, if you have an um, electromagnetic shower, whatever, then you have spread the light all around the, the four PMTs. It's not well located, and, um, and, uh, and that's it. And, um, but anyhow, and then you have diffuse light in the walls, like in UG. You have the peak of direct light, and then you have the, the multiple reflection of, of walls because you are using 
the also in Tyvek as as also in in OG. So we are not changing dimension, but so we, we have been proposing that since one year, and then we have understood that really in simulation, of course, that um, that uh, has very nice features, and we have been exploring these features with people from. Uh, Coimbra in Portugal, but from Granada, in particular from Granada. With them, we have published already uh, a few papers. And the idea in Granada, you see here you have to form, here you have four multipliers, and you, you have to signal that's a particular event, and we have one signal for, for one shower, uh, in particular one million, uh, where you see the signal in the PMT3 here, and you see the signal in the other PMTs, and you see that this one goes very near PMT3 and far from away. So this is a good signal of a single particle crossing all detector, and a single particle crossing all detector in the first trial will be a mirror. So in fact, to doing things and developing algorithms and things like that, you get a very good correlation between your uh, let's call variable for tagging and the real muons, real muons in simulation. So you see that you have a good correlation, so you can even do muon counting with this kind of thing. And this is a very different technique, and uh, at least is original. I don't know if it will be adopted or not, but um, uh, OCK had the idea to have a very big. Uh, so what are the other techniques? So if there are questions, I can go. If it's or not my favorite subject, but okay, let's see. That's in principle works. Uh, and uh, we are so also trying to improve the energy resolution. It's not so bad, so, so good as uh, the yeah, it is, but really we think that we have understood how to improve it. And for vertical showers at 10 TV, you, you can go, I think, Easily about 20%, uh, and that at, um, at, at one TV you can go on 30%. It's not dramatically good, but if you think that CTA, I think CTA will have about, I don't know, at 10 TV will be about, I don't know, 10%, 15%, something like that. And, uh, and this, so perhaps, is a factor of two better, but for ground array, is really very good. If you compare uh, last with zero degrees, you will be more at 30 something uh, percent comparing with 20 percent that, uh, that we have, and same thing for talk, talk and, and things like that. So we think that we can improve almost a factor of two, the, or at least uh, of um, 50 percent, the, uh, the energy resolution of these guys. So what is our proposal is to do um, an array and to build an array by phases. Why by phases? Because you should cover a very large uh, energy range. And so we have done the exercise. So for lower energy range, we need uh, an array that is more compact with a high fuel factor. When we increase the energy, you don't need such big fuel factor. And so we have you, of course, why you do the, this? Because the money is limited. So if you can put less stations, that makes the, the cost much more, much smaller. So we are proposing to have uh, in phase, uh, phase one, that's a kind of proposal, but then you can mix everything. Uh, in phase one, a very high fuel factor, as, as high as possible, covering uh, the present work uh, area. In phase two, we go through uh, an area like Lasso, and you are proposing a low fuel factor. If you go on detail, that means 1%, and you see the, the, the extension. Then you propose on, on uh, phase three to go back to the compact uh, detector business, and but perhaps you don't need a fuel factor of 75, 80%, but you can survive with 50% or, 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 or whatever. Uh, and finally, a last phase to cover, to be more ambitious than, than uh, Lasso, 
really to go on many tens, many hundreds of uh, TV and a few PV region, and with a smaller fill factor. That the example that I have done uh, differently, and uh, and, uh, and and that's it. And then we have the detail of number of PMTs. It's not a detail because it costs money, but uh, but of course you can do. And uh, and with this kind of thing, the good thing is this: this is very flexible, and for each phase you can define very precise physics goal. And uh, of course, uh, the, the the if you have uh, if if you just uh, uh, win the lottery. Then you can build everything very fast and all the phase more or less at the same time. Uh, if not, you build phase by phase and you can modify and accommodate phase according to scientific goals and discover that you have been all will be uh, done. So that's our proposal. And uh, the number of PMTs, okay, that was the detail, is variable we are proposing. For the low energy, it's good to have a, a, a more sensitive area, and it's good to spot this asymmetry signal that I was talking before. And uh, at very high energy, we don't gain anything um, to to have uh, a lot of PMTs because we have already too much light, and you cannot export asymmetries because we have too much too much light. So in space array. Phase two, we, we use just one PMT and not four because otherwise it will be more expensive. That's life, but you can, but you can export situation in between. Now we are starting to 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 export the situation with three PMTs and not four and things like that. Of course, you can dream to to have many multiple sensors. For instance, if you go to silicon photon multiplier, and that you you would install a network. Of, um, of sensors on the bottom of your tank that will be somehow the ideal solution. The only problem is nowadays silicon PMTs are still very expensive. So that's a possible R&D line. And if that happens, okay, we will replace it or, or you install it in some of the tanks or in some of the areas or in some of the phases. Let's see. So which sensitivity? I hope not. Having, I'm talking already too much, which I'm, I'm finishing. Sorry, I, I talk always too much. So, the, and Fernando was not uh, uh, saying to me to stop. That's his fault. So, OK, you see the sensitivity of OK, and you see the sensitivity of LAS. Clearly, you see that LAS basically we have two, two, two factors that is the swimming pool, and this is the tanks that are outside. So, it's Basically, two experiments, and what uh, this is CTA. So you see, CTA is no co okay. Here for ground arrays, we integrate in one year. For CTA, we integrate in fifty hours. That's the convention. I don't know why you take fifty hours, but it's more or less the time that uh, you can have to to look for stars or something like that uh, when you you give times to people. Uh, but you see that you have, there is no competition uh, in sensitivity at uh, low energy at uh, until a, a few tenths of, of TV. But if you want to explore the, the high energy region, even in a uh, in large period of time, uh, ground arrays start to be better, of course, because of the area, just the limitation of the area and of the cost. And the ground rate are, are much less expensive than the, the ICTs. So you can cover larger regions. And uh, the dream that we all is to be at least so good as Lasso, but I think that clearly you can, with smaller tanks and not a swimming pool, you can cover these low energy regions. Here you, they are stopping about a few hundreds of GV. And if you go from one kilometer to five kilometers, it's not a secret, you can cover uh, higher, um, higher region of energy. So, and here, if you do some design flexible with water sharing of tanks, you can av uh, avoid this cusp because then you have, you can even have a continuous and smooth line between all the, the energies. So that's the kind of dream. 
so that's the relevant parameters when uh, where, what I have learned is at the end, if you want to to design curves like that, what you should know is for each energy, what is the energy resolution that you can get, the noir resolution that you can get, the gamma and discrimination that you can get, and the effective area that you can cover. With these four numbers, you, you basically draw these curves. And that's the, uh, our challenge, and also I think our responsibility, because uh, as scientists, we are also the responsibility to promote science and to, to build observatory the, the, that next generations will be, will be using and will make discoveries uh, because, uh, okay, uh, our time life is finite, but these kind of things uh, like you know, LHC and uh, future uh, sun collider are for generations of young uh, people uh, and uh, we have to open the way that they can have the luck that we have been in our generation. So thank you very much. Uh, sorry to, to talk about too much, but it's always a subject that uh, I keep talking if nobody stops and I was not seeing the, the face of you, so I don't know if you are bored or not. Sorry if you, I bother you. Okay, thank you. I'm over, Fernando. Are you listening to me? So Fernando, are you there? Ah. Have you listened to me? Have you listened to my talk? Jesus? Have you listened to my talk? Are you listening to me, Jesus? Uh, I, can, I can listen, Professor Pimenta. Ah, that's good, because I was afraid that I was talking yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, no, and nobody was. But you, we uh, lost you copy, Professor mm. Pimenta? Say. Let me check, sorry. And is speaking. Okay, 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 now, now. Okay, so... so and uh, now I think I have uh, some questions, comments, and so on, and you tell me when I start. I put the camera on, huh? Here, or not? Okay, I think... Uh, should I start now? Uh, For just... me, it's okay. You can start. No okay. Okay, I will. Let me see. What that? Uh, no way. Sorry, just a moment. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mario, uh, for this uh, nice talk. And I have seen in the in YouTube. That there is some uh, question. Uh, Luis Mario Fraile from our institute, let me see, uh, ask for uh, if you can compare the uh, price of, uh, let's say, for instance, CTA of these big imaging and sharing of telescope arrays with what we, you are proposing. Okay. Uh, price is always uh, an important variable. At the end, someone has to pay it, so you should pay attention. But as we are talking about science, I was not considering, but I knew that I would have this question at some point. So you know better than me the price of CTA. 
right. the numbers that I have, the order of magnitude, people were talking about 40 million or 50 million for CTA North, uh, in Canarias or something like that. And people, uh, if I understand, Spain has 40 million, uh, something for, C uh, for CTA North, and then more 20 million, I don't know. CTA North perhaps is... Uh, 60, 70 million of euros, you know better than me the, the price of CTA North. The price of CTA South, uh, I think, is a mystery for everybody. Uh, I have heard numbers between 200 and 400 million. Uh, anyhow, it's uh, many hundreds of millions, 200, 250, 30, I don't know. Depends on, I think nobody knows uh, at the end. So, uh, that's the price. What is the order of magnitude that we are clearly one order of magnitude below? So if uh, I'm talking, uh, I, uh, what I'm proposing is um, building by phase. For the first two phases, phase one and phase two, that cover already the two extremes of energy, I think that we are talking about something about 20 million or 25 million, something like that. That's my back of envelope computation. Uh, I know that that's something that I have to, to justify at the time for funding agency next year, so we have to do that very carefully. But the order of magnitude will be between 20 and 25 for the first two phases. If you have the ambition for the phase three, that is a wider compact array for times of work, depends, of course, on the few factors that you put and solution of number of PMTs that you put. But then we are talking again about, uh, I would say, about 30 million and more for the phase three. For phase four, that extending for five uh, square kilometers, I would say something about 10 million. So that depends on the money that you have and the priorities on, 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 on physics that we, we have. I think that you can have a very good observatory very, very, with very, very important result if you have something between 20 and 30 million. If you have more money, then I would say that our day's priority will be to go to the highest energies because it's cheaper. Because you have to have, and oh, you have all the tension in the world nowadays because there are these new pivotal sources. And so you can buy, I would say, whatever money that you can put, we increase. So we have five million. Okay, then I, I go from one kilometer to two kilometers or three kilometers. I have 10 million. Okay, I go to five kilometers if, if the site allows to go on this area. So it's important to have a site that can be extended up to some, some factor. And I think five kilometers is most that you can think about. So I don't know. So, but the good thing is that you can start working the first day as Ogier was doing. Ogier was doing when uh, we have uh, about 20% of the tanks installed, something like that. So first day you, you do physics. And you have to build it in 20 years or something. So I, I'm not worried on the scale of money. I'm worried on the political will to do it. And the political will depends on scientists, on the interest of scientists, and, and their capacity to, to show the governments that it's important for science, but it's also important for geopolitics because to have something in South America, at least in Portugal and in Spain, is very, very important because we are very connected with South America. We, as with Brazil, you with all the South American countries, and to have this scientific connection also is very important. And I think we have, we have done it in OG. I think in Spain, in Portugal, is more strong this connection with Brazil, if I understand. But uh, clearly, it will be very, very important to have uh, an institute from Madrid, because center of Spain, uh, entering in the game. So sorry for propaganda, but I'm, I'm also there for that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I don't see any other question in YouTube, but uh, just a simple question. Perhaps you mentioned about that. Uh, you 
mentioned about several possible phases and you compare the performance of this uh, of this detector with lasso and also with hawk and in principle you could in reach uh, the same or even uh, higher sensitivities to lasso but a realistic schedule time scale to to for this because okay you are comparing with what Hawk and Lasso are today. Yeah, but okay, so give me 10 I years. Guess, I guess in the same way, what give, you mentioned give, now, give, depends give. on political decisions of many things that are not predictable. But I guess that in a certain way, you, you have thought, okay, if either we are able to build this in a certain number of years or it doesn't make sense. So Okay, okay. okay. So that's a good question because uh, I'm not so young as I was before. And I would like to have it built in my time life, starting at least built in, in uh, still in start life. So it's a very important question for me: is can you build in your time life or not? So let's define T zero the moment we have ten millions. Okay. Somehow by some okay, put all countries together, Germany, Italy, uh, Brazil, if Brazil is better than, than it is now, but that's another story. Portugal is very small. Hopefully, at some point, Spain, whatever. We have 13 countries. America, England. So, in 13 countries, you should find a way to have 10 million in the next two, three years. On funding agency, whatever, the, some countries before the others, Let's suppose that you have 10 million, and then you have 10 T0. If I have 10 million, I think that we could, we have, we have to decide, of course, the design in the next one, two years. We, we decide that the, this, uh, the, the design phase should end it by 22, but with this pandemic, everything is late by six months, so uh, it will be not the end of 22. Now, probably, will be. The first, uh, the first semester of 23. By the first semester of 23, we should have a design and should have a site. And then we need 10 million. And if you have 10 million, I'm convinced that in a scale of a few years, less than five years, you can install in getting working because most of the things are conventional. We can always dream to do other technology to put silicon PMTs in. But water sharing of tanks, if you go to the solution of water sharing of tanks, we have 20 years of experiment in OG. You know, you know the companies that have built them. The PMTs are working since ages. Water, okay, we have to know the water sources, we have to transport them, but that you know to do it in OG. So everything, the line is there. The, there is no technology showstopper in building it. It's a question just to to have money to do it and the political will and scientific. Uh, uh, so people should be convinced, first of all, on science, on the, that this was why to build. But, uh, but you can start really the game, I would say, to have an order of magnitude 20, uh, 10 million. Then with 20 million, uh, and that we go up to the money because if you get results, then you get more money. and. Uh, Perhaps in, in 10 years, you, you, after the 10 uh, T0, you have a complete thing if everything goes well. That's more or less the, the time of OG. If you compare with OG, I think the first meetings of OG the, uh, were at the end of 80s, beginning of 90s, 92 or 93 in Paris. They start to have chosen the site beginning, I think. I was not in the beginning of OG. I, I entered in OG in 2005, in 2005 or had in this century. But okay, and OG was officially inaugurated, completed the 1600 tackle in 2008. So it was basically since the beginning in construction on site was 10 years until the completion. I think this scale of time is smaller. In principle, you have more tanks, but it's smaller. So it, everything is concentrated, but it's also to do that is at 5000 meters. So you have you have to prepare very well things at low energy. You have to have a base at low energies and then to, to transport because to work at 5,000 meters is not trivial, at least for no local people. But, uh, but okay, it's, it's not the moon. 
so we can do it and we have Alma, Alma, Alma is Ayat. So one of the sites for this in Chile is um, near the Alma, Alma site. Alma is at 5,400 uh, 5, meters and we are talking one of the sites is nearby at 4,400 and 1,000 meters make a difference. And so it's easier. And Chinese are working there, but of course it's not for everybody. There are people that are not able to to go to these altitudes. I don't know if I will be able to go, but let's see. Okay, uh, I have just seen a question of Jose Luis Contreras. I didn't realize ah. before. Um, would it be possible to go to not so higher altitudes? I guess you pray. Uh, okay, you pay uh, enormous because price. perhaps you would have more chances to find places and so on. That's but true. this is the question of Jose Luis. Yeah, that's true. That's of course very true. But uh, the problem is the low energies. So if really you want to fill the gap with satellites, and if you want to give the gamma ray burst to have the transients, to have the flats, all this scale and the energy that is very relevant to Fermi bubbles is of below of, of the order of 100 GV. For instance, present Lasso and Oc are basically missing this region. And this region is nowadays very, very important, important for multi messages because that's the region Magic, for instance, we have, okay, uh, I don't know what was the energy, I think it was higher, it was a few hundreds of GV, but it's not PV. We are clearly on the hundreds of GV or below hundreds of GV. Fermi goes until 20 GV, then it's not big enough. And we cannot build something in space so big because it's very expensive to build uh, three square meters in space. You cannot build uh, 1,000 square meters in space, it's possible. Okay, perhaps you can put in moon, but then it's more expensive even. Uh, so, uh, so you have to go to high altitude. Uh, otherwise, the the, the showers the, the showers don't arrive to the surface. Of course, in ICTs you can do it because you are collecting sharing of light. You are not collecting particles. That's why you need to go to high altitude, yeah. not just to explore the view. But it's nice to view. Should be nice to view. Okay, thank you very much. I think there is no further question. So again, thank you very much, uh, Mario. So it was my pleasure. Your interesting talk. And thank you to all the attendants to this, uh, to this talk. Okay, so okay. I think we can close here the, the event. Okay, bye, everybody. Adios, fiquem bem.